I don't have any friends. Wow, okay, that is weird. Wow. I don't really understand what it is as a game. It then tried to fix it again, and things started to get even worse. At this point, I had to execute plan B. This is where things started to go horribly wrong. Hi, I'm Oliver Age 24. If you watch game dev YouTube videos, you've probably seen the videos where a certain amount of game developers work together on a game and they pass the game along and it changes as it goes from developer to developer. Now, this concept was made most popular by Blackthorn Productions. Other developers have taken this concept and done it in different ways as well, and it's always really interesting to see what the end results will be. While researching into the idea, I was trying to figure out who did the first video of this type. I stumbled across a channel called Bad Duck who did the idea all the way back in July 2021. While going down the rabbit hole, I also looked into the telephone game, where a message is passed all the way down a line of people and at the end it's completely different to the message at the start. You may have also played a game where you draw a part of a picture and then pass it down a line of people to each draw the next part without seeing the previous parts, and at the end you reveal it and it's a monstrosity. That game originally was called Exquisite Corpse. I really wanted to have a go at this idea myself, but I don't have any friends. So, taking inspiration from my previous video, I'm going to experiment with AI. So, I asked ChatGPT to help me write some instructions to give to the other AI for this challenge. I won't read it out, but you can pause this video to read it if you'd like. Step 1 basically explains they'll be taking turns to add code in C Sharp to the game. Step 2 just explains that the AI will receive a little summary of where we're at with the game so far, and all of the code base so it knows what is there and what it can add. Step 3 basically explains that since I'll be doing the art for them, just expect pixel art or simple drawings or basic 3D shapes. Step 4 encourages them to add their own twist to the game, but not to just add completely separate parts to the game. Step 5 just encourages them to also bug fix and polish what is already there. I was worried that the AIs would be too similar, so I asked it to give me different backgrounds for each of the characters, and to give them different skills and different interests. So developer 1 is Jordan Reyes, the visionary. Hobbies and interests are urban photography, experimental music, and abstract painting. A self-made technologist with a knack for transforming everyday cityscapes into imaginative experiences. So let's hand all of this over to DeepSeek and see what it comes up with. Okay, so it says, leaning back in a chair adorned with graffiti stickers and sipping a matcha latte. All right, let's build a living, breathing city that feels like a surrealist painting. I'm thinking isometric cyberpunk urban sprawl with procedural building personalities. No boring grids. Let's make the city react to player choices like a moody artist. That is a very interesting combination of words. Let's see how that translates into a game. So the first thing it wanted to do was create a 3D isometric grid. So I took the scripts and copied them over and pressed play. Wow, okay, that is weird. Wow. And I was taken back because it was an isometric grid. It was kind of staggered like bricks. So every other lane was half offset and it looked really odd and it was in the shape of a diamond. Next, it got me to make the camera view isometric and also to add some film grain and some chromatic aberration to the camera. It then wanted me to swap the cubes for tiles which were made of quads, except it got them facing the wrong direction, so it looked really weird. But after a few more prompts, it managed to fix this and face them the correct way. Now, when we click on the tiles, currently nothing happens, but I think something is supposed to happen based on our building placer script. So I got the AI to fix this script. Now we were able to click on the grid and it would place a cube on the grid. Well, half above the grid and half below the grid. 
Next, it fixed the code so that the buildings were placed on top of the grid and it had me create a material that was see-through and a light teal colour. So the grid is working as it's supposed to do, but human error, I thought teal was a bluish colour, but it's actually a greenish colour, so I've got that wrong. Next it made the cubes random heights, which in fairness does make them look more like buildings. It then got me to create four more materials, and this time it gave me the hex codes to use, so I couldn't possibly make a mistake. And it gave me values for emission, to make some of the materials glow. I then hit play, and this happened. So we've got our grid, we place the building, and it crashes. Oh no. Luckily the AI was able to fix this, so I pressed play again. So we place some buildings, and some of them do seem to have different colours. Whoa, is they rotating. What on earth is that? It's changing size. This is really weird. I don't know if there's a game in this, but it's definitely doing something odd. Next it added some controls. So the WASD keys, or the arrow keys, move the camera up, down, left and right. The other controls are clicking on the grid, which spawns a building, and if you scroll the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. Finally, it got me to change the background to black and it added in the ability to right click and move the mouse to spin the camera around. And I think we should leave it here. It's only been one hour since I started the challenge, but I think we've already made quite a lot of progress into this prototype. And I think if we give each AI this amount of time, we should have something pretty good by the end of it. I would say, honestly, I'm quite impressed so far. This isn't something I would have made because I don't really understand what it is as a game, but it looks pretty decent and it works in terms of it does what it's supposed to do. I'm intrigued by the buildings having personalities and those personalities having different actions like scaling, rotating, changing colour. I'm just not sure where this will go. So let's hand it over to the next AI and find out. So I sent the character brief, the code base, a description of what the game looks like when I press play and the rules of this challenge to chat GPT. And they're going to take on the role of developer number two. So they've replied with, Hey there, I'm Morgan Tate, the craftsman. I've been admiring the evolving aesthetic and kinetic vibe of our city so far, but I noticed that while our world is visually dynamic, it lacks a clear objective or tension. I propose we introduce an element of strategy by adding an enemy invasion mechanic. Imagine this, a central city core that must be defended against waves of enemies that creep in from the outside. Skirts. Below are my step-by-step -step instructions and complete source code with three new scripts to integrate this mechanic. Awesome, that sounds pretty good. So first, it wanted me to create a sphere, which would be our city core that we need to protect from the enemies. Next, it told me to create a capsule as an enemy and the enemy would move towards the city core and damage it if it collides with it. We then created enemy spawners, which were made of a cylinder and they would just spawn enemies in randomly throughout the game. Then it wanted me to position four different spawners on the corners of the diamond map and move the city core into the center. Next it created a health bar to show how much remaining health our city core has. And each time an enemy collides with you, you lose some health. I then remembered that the grid was supposed to be a teal colour, so I fixed that and I actually changed the tile into a grid so that it matched the description the first AI gave. I then asked what colour should all of the new objects be? It said a bright red for the enemies, a dark purple for the spawners and a metallic blue for the city core. So here's how it looked with the new colours. Now, I still have 10 minutes left with this AI, so I asked what else should I add in, and it gave me a few different scripts. It gave me a script for turrets, it gave me a turret placer script, and it also gave me a projectile script. So I threw all of those into the game, made the prefabs it asked me to make, and this is how it turned out. 
Hopefully you agree that this looks a lot more like a game, even though it's from AI, which is usually considered not very creative. I guess the reason it's coming up with slightly out there ideas is because I'm giving it the character briefs, which were also created by AI. The controls are a bit odd though. To place a turret, you need to hold the T key down on the keyboard while you click. And if you're not holding the T and you click, you place a building. And at the moment, buildings don't really have a purpose within the tower defense. But we've still got three different AIs left, so hopefully one of them can piece it all together and turn it into a cohesive prototype. And that's the end of dev number two. So now we're going to pass it over to Dev3. Hey there, I'm Casey Lynn, your resident creative nomad and Unity improviser, stoked to jump into this project as developer free. I've got my skateboard under one arm and some street art vibes in my head, ready to inject some spontaneous energy into a cyberpunk city builder meets tower defense mashup you've got cooking. Let's roll through what's here, tweak some mechanics and add my own twist to make this grid pop with life. Buckle up, it's about to get dynamic. So first of all, they wanted to work on a resource system. So they introduced energy and income. They also took the personalities and gave them building types. So greedy became corporate, chaotic became research, artistic became cultural, and green became power plant. Next, they gave me loads of scripts to copy and paste into the project, and they changed a lot of the existing scripts by adding more things to them. And it was quite scary because the game was sort of broken when I first started copying things over until I added all of the changes that they wanted me to change. So I couldn't test it as we went along. I just had to trust that the AI knew what it was doing, which is obviously quite a scary thing to trust, since AI can be quite random, to say the least. But, ye of little faith, it worked. You'll notice in the top left of the screen, we have energy and income, which gradually increase or decrease over time. You need energy for some of the buildings, and for the turrets to be able to shoot. Income is spent on building the buildings. At the moment, each of the buildings costs 10 to build, and the turrets cost 20. The corporate buildings generate income, as you'd expect, and the power plant buildings generate energy. The research buildings don't have a purpose yet, but in the future, they will unlock more things. The cultural buildings increase the city's happiness, and that's not shown on the screen at the moment, but behind the scenes, the city has a happiness level, which fluctuates depending on what's going on in the game. At the moment it's completely unbalanced as you can just spam each type of building and you suddenly have loads of income, loads of energy and loads of firepower. But it definitely feels like more of a game now. At this point we still had half an hour left. So the next thing that Dev3 wanted to work on was some UI, and he created five UI buttons, one for each of the building types and one for the turret. It also created a tooltip that says what the button does when you hover over it. Once we'd done that, we only had 10 minutes left, and with those 10 minutes, it decided to colour in the UI and match the building colours to the UI colours, so you could see what type of buildings you'd built. This is the first time so far where one of the developers has made a change to what already exists within the game, because originally the first dev wanted the game to be all different colours that were changing all the time, and now the different building types have different colours, which honestly does make more sense from a gameplay perspective, but it does make the game a little bit more generic. And that's the end of our free hours and our free devs. So next we're going to pass it over to AI4. So this is developer 4 using Gemini. The user wants me, as Riley Quinn, the fourth developer, to add a new feature to the existing Unity game. I need to analyse the current game state and code base to understand what has been done so far. Then it talks about what has been done already, and then, as the experimentalist, I should aim to mix genres or add unique twists. The game has elements of city building and tower defence. I noticed that research currently doesn't have a purpose, and happiness and research 
virtual levels aren't displayed to the player. So first of all, it added another text field to the UI that displayed the amount of research that the player has. Next, it spent about half an hour to make a whole research menu with upgrades that you can purchase for 100 research points each. And when you click on one to purchase it, it disables the button and says that you've purchased it. Next, it created another text element on the UI that says what the happiness level is. And finally, it wasted the rest of its time trying to get the grid to change colour depending on the happiness level. But it couldn't get it working in the time limit. And so this is the end of AI 4. Now we're going to pass it to the final AI to hopefully wrap up the game and finish it off nicely. Greetings, I'm Samir Patel, the perfectionist developer with a wild card twist. After reviewing the current state of the game, I have some exciting ideas to elevate this project and make it truly memorable for the audience. So this AI is Claude, and I'm using the free version, which I think is a bit out of date now. So it's a little bit unhinged and there's a limit to how many characters you can send it. The first thing it wants to do though, is to create a procedural grid instead of the diamond shaped one that we had before. As you can see, its first attempt is kind of working, but is very random. There's random grid squares all over the place, not connected, and you can only build towers on those grid spaces. So it feels very different to what we had before. Next, it tried to combine the grid from before with the new grid and it started to include road tiles and landmarks, which for now are just different shaped cubes with different materials. The roads are supposed to be connected from one landmark to the next landmark. But as you can see, that hasn't worked and they're just randomly placed. Some of them aren't even on the map. This is where things started to go horribly wrong. The code for placing buildings started to not work sometimes and work other times, with no real reason as to why. The landmarks started to only appear on the grid, but the roads stopped appearing altogether, which is bad. It then tried to fix it again and things started to get even worse. The whole grid system stopped working and basically smushed together. At this point, I had to execute plan B, which was to reverse all the development that this developer had done and put it back to the state that it was at the end of developer four. And then we had 15 minutes left. So I started a new conversation with Claude and asked what could be done in that time. And it suggested I add particle effects to some of the existing things in the game. And so I used some of my Unity assets and I threw in some explosions, some muzzle flashes and some spawn effects when you place a building. It's not as much as the other developers accomplished, but it does add quite a lot of juice to the game. And unfortunately, the hour was up. And so this is the finished game. Personally, I quite like the ideas it's come up with. I think it would need a lot of refining and you'd have to change a few things to kind of balance it out and make it work. But there's a few decent ideas there that could be used to make an actual game. I have looked through the code and it is a bit of a spaghetti mess, as I'm sure you can imagine. And with that, I'd really like to hear your thoughts. Which of the AIs do you think did the best job and which ones do you think did the worst? Which ones would you like to see back in future videos? If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, like and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.